and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd i'm your host mikey and in today's tutorial it's all about the rise and shine afghan just like you see now you'll notice that the free pattern which i'll include a link in the more information of this video so you don't really need to search that hard for it but you will notice that it's more of a spring or summer look so what i've done you know christmas is coming so why not make it more christmas themed so that seems pretty obvious to me and you know what i've been reading your comments on redheart.com's facebook as well as the crochet crowd and i've noticed something when it comes to people loving the granny squares i'll share that with you next so according to Facebook, there's three different types of granny square lovers. You have the people that love lacy, lightweight, you know, very airy granny squares. Then you have the people that are traditional. These, this one here is a traditional. And you can see that the holes are following into place and it's just a basic standard. You know, you change your colors when you want, blah, blah, blah. And then I didn't realize that there's a third type and the third type love solid granny squares and I never really knew that many of these existed. So I went hunting on redheart.com and I found one in a pattern that is in a spring or summer look. All I've done is that I've just changed the colors to match the Christmas season coming ahead. So this is just a really neat look. So I have some tips when it comes to doing these solid because this is one of those where it's really not that hard but you cannot make assumptions and I'll tell you why in just a sec. So in a granny square like this, you have to be aware not to assume that you think you know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm one of those people where I was like, oh yeah, okay, single crochet for this or this and I'll get to this corner. Meanwhile, I didn't realize you have to half double crochet, single crochet, slip stitch in the center and blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of instructions, but it's not intimidating in order to do. You just can't assume that you're an expert at everything. You actually have to follow the directions just like you see. In this particular afghan, it's actually done on a diagonal. So they have the, the triangle squares. We're gonna be doing two different tutorials with this. I'm gonna show you how to do this one in this particular tutorial, and then I'll show you another tutorial on how to do the triangle. It just keeps the videos a little bit uh, smaller in size. So when you're putting these together, this would be the outside edge. There will be a border on that, and then these would come up on an angle like so. So what if you don't want an angle because you're not that great of doing triangles? You know, you're the crochet artist. You can decide what you want. You simply can put them up like this. Just grab your next one that goes with it, you know, and put it flat as expected like you would see normally with uh, granny square. So really you are the artist. You can decide what you want. This has all just been done with basic super saver yarn today and we're using a size six millimeter crochet hook today and this is quite fabulous. So let's really get started and follow along with me right now. Just before I begin, I just want to share with you the colors that we are going to go from burgundy to white, burgundy, white, burgundy, and then the two outside layers are green. Again, you can substitute these colors. I actually think this would be really amazing in the pastel colors uh, for spring, even for a baby's afghan. I think it would be really quite amazing. So we're using Super Saver yarn today, and this is by Red Heart, size 6 millimeter crochet hook. And we're just going to create a slip knot. And there are instructions available. You'll see them at the bottom of your screen as well as you can access them in the link of the more information of this video. So what we have is we have chain four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And let's form that with the ring. So we're just gonna go into the very start one, just like so. And we're gonna grab the yarn and pull it through and voila, you have your ring. So if you've done traditional granny squares before, this is gonna be a snap for you. So what we have now is uh, chain three and it counts as a double crochet here and throughout this pattern and then 15 double crochet into the ring. So let's just chain three, one, two, and three. Going into the center of this ring, we're gonna double crochet. Like you see, and we wanna do that with a total of 15 double crochets with the chaining of three to start with. It actually gives you a chain count of, sorry, a, a post count of 16 going all the way around. And you'll need to maintain those counts in order to keep this particular square from messing up on you. So you do have to pay attention. Let me finish this. Uh, so get 16 on here, a complete total. That includes your the chain of three. And we'll meet back up and we'll keep moving along. So I have all 16 now on here and that includes the chaining of three and we just want to slip stitch to the top of the chaining three just to bring it over. Now I, I have to fasten this off at this point and I'm only going to show the fastening off process once throughout this tutorial to keep it simpler. And I just simply cut my string and I just pull up like that and I just kind of pull it snug and then I just kind of weave it in and out of the few stitches here. And that's how I would do all of them when you're going to work through this process. So I'm only gonna show that one time on here. 
and when you get enough in there, I simply just wait to the next round before uh, trimming that at this point. So you just wanna make sure it's all gonna be resting properly. So let's move along to round number two and we are gonna move on with the next color which will be white. We're now gonna start with the white and simply just my forming a loop, we're gonna get that ready and we're just gonna pick this up. Now you will notice that there's a right side and a wrong side. Do you see how the stitches are kind of facing towards you? That is the right side, that's what we want. That would be the wrong side. So you can see that there's a difference in the way that it looks. So it doesn't matter which one that you go into at this point. I always kind of recommend, it's my OCD kicking in, that I never stop and start exactly um, where I've done it on the other side. So I just end up with a more balanced look. So I'm just gonna slip in my uh, hook into any of the stitches, one stitch around, just pull it through, and we're gonna let our straggler kind of fall down, and we're gonna trap that into position to start with. So let's go with the right side facing, join round two, which is this, and we are gonna be chaining up three, double crochet into the same stitch. So let's not get too far ahead. So we're just gonna chain three, one, two, and three, and we're gonna double crochet into the same spot that you joined, so just wrap, going in. Okay, so the straggler, you just wanna leave that on top so it gets st stuck underneath and you just wanna do that a few times with these stitches and we wanna double crochet twice. So you have a total with the chaining as a total of three posts right there and that's one of your corners. So moving along, it says to half double crochet into the next stitch, a single crochet, then half double crochet into the next and then three double crochets. So this is a very simple round. So we're starting to create that little bend that the, you can see in the big sample. So we're just gonna half double crochet into the next. Just like that. So this stitch is a little smaller. We're gonna single crochet into the next. Okay. And now we're gonna half double crochet. And so we're ready now for the next corner. So it's three double crochets. So this is not like a traditional granny square where you have three uh, double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. This is simply one corner, is simply three double crochets. So continuing along on that same path, so what you just did here, you're gonna do again. So I'm gonna review again one more time. So we're gonna half double crochet. We are gonna single crochet into the next. We are going to half double crochet. And we're ready for another corner, okay? And the next corner is three double crochets. So continue that same rhythm going all the way around for this particular round. And I'll meet you back up in just a sec where we'll move on to the next one. And we're gonna be fastening off this one and then moving back to the burgundy after this. Okay, I'm all the way back around. I just have one more stitch. And if you've done it right, it should just be a half double crochet. And we're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain of three that you started off with and fasten off. So we're going to fasten off, weave in your ends again, and then what I would do then is go back and then you can trim off the other ends that are kind of sticking out at this point just to keep your work looking great. So let's move along to round number three. So we have everything fastened off. We're now on round number three. Don't assume you know what you're doing at this point. Stick with me here or really carefully read your instructions. We're simply just going to come into the outside. So we just want to go into the middle of the three that you see on the corner and pull through your burgundy yarn. We're just gonna let the straggler fall down and bury it like we have been. And so chain three. So one, two, and three. And we come into that same stitch for two more double crochet. So I'm just gonna pull the straggler a little bit tighter. So the next stitch now is a half double crochet. The next stitch is a single crochet. We're dipping down, we're creating that gap or that, that space that you see that kind of loopy look that into the center. The next one now is a slip stitch. So we just wrap our yarn, pull through and through. So you can see that we've kind of just made our way down. I'm gonna let the straggler fall out of the way. The next one now is building back up. So we're gonna single crochet. The next one is a half double crochet. And we just want to make sure we get it into the right stitch. Okay. And this is part of the join. So you may think it looks a little abnormal. It's not. It's part of the join in the last one. And now we're ready in the middle of this one here on the outside corner for three double crochets. It's very good. So I'm gonna repeat this one more time. So we simply start off, this is how you do it all together again. We half double crochet the next. 
we single crochet the next because we're dipping down. The next is a slip stitch. And the next we're going to build back up is a single crochet. The next is a half double crochet I should say. And now you're back on the middle of the outside again on the outside corner for three double crochets. So continue that same going all the way around and we'll meet back up in a second. Oops, I've been half double crocheting there because I'm talking to you too much. <laughs> on the outside just three uh, double crochets. Just continue that same rhythm going all the way around and I'll meet you back up. We'll fasten off and move on back to white for the next revolution. Now if you've done it right your last stitch will be a half double crochet before you run into the next corner. So now we just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain of three to finalize we weave in and get ready for white one more time. We're now ready for the next section. Again we find the very corner and this is round number four as we continue our journey and coming into the outside there we just pull through just like we have been all along. So now we simply just start off the same way we did. We chain three. One, two, and three and coming back down into the same stitch we we'll do two more double crochets. So you can see that there's kind of a similarity in between all of these squares. So the next one here, see how I'm just keeping my straggler on top. I really want to trap it in there. Kind of do it without really noticing that I do it because it's so natural for me. So the next stitch is going to be two double crochets. So this is really going to cause a flare out to happen on your corners which is gorgeous. The next one is now a half double. Half double crochet I should say. The next one is a single crochet. And if you bang on, see how this is the slip stitch here? That's where your slip stitch is on this one. So you just pull through and through. And so now we go and build up again. So the next one is single crochet. The next one is a half double crochet. The next one is two double crochets. And the very corner one, see you're right on that corner, perfect. And it's three double crochets today for that. So I'm going to show you this one more time like I have been. And you want to do it and you really can see the dipping is now starting to really take effect as you can see there. So here we go again. So we're going to do two double crochets. So the first one outside of the, the corner edge is uh, two uh, doubles. And now what we have is we have half double crochet. So we're going down, so we're going to go single crochet and again slip stitch and now we build back up. So the next one is a single. The next one is half double. So we build back up. The next one is two doubles. And finally the next corner, see we're right on, is three double crochets. So continue that all the way around in order to uh, that same formation and when we come back we're going to fasten on and we're going to bring back burgundy for the very last time in this square. So if you're still following along you're going to end up with two double crochets as your final stitch just like so and what we have to do is just attach to the top so we do a slip stitch to the beginning chain three just like so and now we're going to fasten that off and we're going to bring back our burgundy next. So we're ready for the next round and this is what we have going on is that you have your two double crochets, you have your three right into the center. Doesn't matter which corner you pick. You just want to go into the center of the three that you see. So it's just like we have been all along. But this is a very thin looking round. When you look at the real sample you will notice that this burgundy here is not as big and it kind of just follows along. And so this we have to pay attention to that. So we just uh, put it through there. We're just going to now chain one. And we're going to single crochet three more times into that same stitch. So just a small little thin single crochet going in. So three times like so. So the next two stitches are going to get, <laughs> are going to get um, two single crochets each. So there's one and two. And this is one and two for this one. And so you have to count over seven stitches. So here we go. Let's do that. So that we're going to count over seven single crochets. So one. I'm going to put the straggler behind. I trapped it enough. So you got two. We got three. We got four. 
we got five, six, and seven. So as soon as you have your seven in, then you start doing the two single crochets together again. So for two stitches in a row, you will do two single crochets in each. And if you've done your math right and counting, then the final one here, which is the next corner, is your corner just like you started over here. And there will be three single crochets into that. So we're going to review one more time. So let's start again. So we've done our corner. It's got three uh, single crochets. The next two are going to have two single crochets each. So that was one. There's two singles into this one. And so now for the next seven, there's going to be one single crochet in each. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So let's begin again. So we're going to do two single crochets into the next, two singles into the next because we want to do two of those in a row. And then if I've done my math right, I should end up on the final one, which I do. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and we continue to do that all the way around. So continue to do that. We're going to fasten this off and we're going to start introducing our green for the final two revolutions of this square. So we're back all the way around and the final two stitches should be one single crochet into each. And we're going to fasten this off in just a second. We just want to get our uh, stitches in there and then we're just going to slip stitch to where you've done your very starting of this rotation. So just, just slip stitch and pull it through. Weave in your ends and bring on your green or any other color that you want to use in order to do the next two revolutions. So we're now ready to go and simply just grabbing our green now or any other color, you want to go in the very center of the three single crochets that you have on any corner. It doesn't matter which one. So this one here is about now filling into the space. So we have been dipping down so now the green is going to start balancing so that it comes out to be a flat edge so that you can join it with the neighbor. So we're just going to attach the green just like so. And we want to chain up three at this point. So one, two and three and coming back down into the same stitch like you have been doing before we want to two double crochets. Okay, so what we have here says half double crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet into the next three stitches and I won't jump too far ahead. So here we go. So we're going to half double crochet into the next and then it says to single crochet into the three uh, to the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. So the reason for that is that your corners always have to fill in a gapping space around the outside but then this here is like a bulging edge like you see here. It's like bulging out in comparison to where it is down here so you want to go thin right at that particular point. So now it says to say, what, what do we have here? Half double crochet, single crochet. I'm just reading as we go into the next thing. So we're going to half double crochet into the next uh, two stitches and then double crochet into the next five. So the next two stitches are going to be half double. So we're building it so that it's becoming taller. So it's starting to fill in the gap. And now the next five stitches are going to be a double crochet. So that was one. Two. Oops, I got a wrap first. And that was three. We have four. And we have five. So now we're going to start building it. So you can see that it kind of dipped down into the dippy, dippy, dippy area. So the next two ha are going to be half double crochets. So we're now just working this side just doing reverse of what we just came from. So two half doubles. The next three are going to be singles. One, two, and three. Okay, the next one is a half double. Just like you see there. And so the next one is the center of the outside there, of the outside corner for three double crochets. So we're going to review this one more time. 
it's not as complicated as it really looks on the pattern. It's quite deceptive. So you can start seeing now that it's starting to cause that dipping area which is really quite fabulous. So let's start this again and try to go based on memory. So the very first one is a half double so we're going down and the next three are going to be um, three single crochets into one into each of them for three singles in a row. So then we start going to two half doubles. We need to get taller and so for the next five we're going to be double crochets each. So one double crochet each, each. So that was one. This is three. This is four and five. So now we have to start building back up again. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to do two half doubles. And then three singles. One, two, and three. And it's a half double as we come to the corner. And so we're into the corner, the middle one. <laughs> well, what do you know is right on. <laughs> Love when that happens. And I don't have to do a take two of that. So it's very, uh, this pattern is very uh, dependent on the row below to make sure that all your stitch counts are right. And so continue that same going all the way around. We just have one more revolution. I'm going to just take, I'm just going to meet you back up, uh, get the side done, and then we're going to move on to the final revolution of these fabulous sunrise throws squares. So when you came all the way back around, the last stitch of this revolution will be half double crochet before joining it to the top, just like so. So I just want you to take a note where you joined it is actually the beginning of the three posts here. That is important because in the next round we are not going to be finishing off like in the corner like you normally would. We actually have to come around the corner and I'll explain that in just a few seconds. So let's uh, begin. This is round number seven coming up and we just simply just turn our work and now we begin this revolution. So beginning round seven we've already turned it so now we're just going to simply just chain up one and we simply just have to come into each stitch as we go along. So it says to count 19. So we have to start off with remember to get that one that we just were in. So that's one. So you could count 19. You don't see me counting 19 do you? Because you don't really need to. So the reason for it's counting 19 it's actually counting you to the very center of the next corner. So when you come all the way back over to here you can get the middle one and that is your 19th. <laughs> I know isn't that brilliant? So what we have to do is just make our way over for single crochet going all the way across. So why did we turn our work? Well in crochet squares because we have been going all the way around and around on the same side by turning it around it gives it a different look just for your edging. It's not a drastic look but it's enough to be significant on an afghan if you were looking at it. So we're simply just coming across and we would be counting 19 if we were counting but we don't really need to. Just simply just go across. So we're coming across now to the final corner. So you have your three double crochets. So you have one, two, and three. So the middle one is your 19th. So the middle one is going to get three. Um, single crochets in it instead. So everybody else has been getting one in the middle we are going to give it three. So that allows you to turn the edge and simply again just coming down this edge. I don't think you need to see me do it again but you have 19 coming down this. We make our way to the corner and then three single crochets into the corner and continue that all the way around. Let's uh, finish this round and I'll meet back up and fasten off. So we're coming back all the way around and remember what I said that when we turn this we were not right on the corner and remember if we're following the instructions the corner still has to get three single crochets in this one here. So it's kind of unusual you always start in a corner. In this case you didn't. So once you get your corner in you simply just slip stitch to the beginning of the round that you started with and now fasten in and you are completed this square. Now it is time to whip stitch these together. So even if you have your corner pieces already done because well, there will be another tutorial to show how to do these triangles. So when you're assembling these if you're doing it exactly the way the afghan is showing you'll notice that this is the outside corner here and so then these are all diagonal to each other just like you see 
as much as you can there. So that's how these would work. If you do not want to do the triangle, if you're not comfortable with it, you can always attach it together. So it's just a regular granny square just like so. So here's how we attach. I just get this complementary yarn that you see. So I have in green. I create a slip knot on the other side of my needle. And what I'm just going to do now is that I'm going to come into the very corner of the front one here. And I'm just going to go into the stitch on the front. And then I just want to make sure that the both both of the right sides are facing up so that I know that when these come together that they'll be facing the right way. So I'm just going to go into the corner on the other side and pull through. So this yarn is going to be pretty much invisible. And now with the needle, I didn't pull it all the way through, but with the needle I'm going through the slip stitch. Sorry, the slip knot just like so. So now I'm just going to put down the straggler on the top of the line and simply just follow the stitches. So I go to the next stitch on this side, go to the next stitch on the other, and I keep the straggler down on top and I allow it to go around. So this is just whip stitching at its best. And you simply just go along. So when I'm doing an entire afghan, I actually lay the whole row out and I just work my way across the whole row. I just don't do individual like this uh, because you can just save a lot more time with it and it's a lot easier. So you just want to simply go through and then once you have that done, you will notice that you'll have a nice clean attaching look just like so.